Hey Ramblers, this video covers chapter 4.5 in our textbook and deals with applications to marginality. Now many of these applications come to us from economics, in fact all of them do. And if you're not taking econo economics, that's okay because you all have the calculus background now to understand it, whether in the econ class or not. So we're going to start out by defining some of the basic building block functions of economics, which will be the cost function, the revenue function, and the profit function. And then we'll try to see how calculus can be used to figuring out how to maximize profit, because that's what so many businesses, or in fact almost all businesses, want to do. So we're going to find that that occurs when the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. So you want to make sure that concept is in your notes, and we'll see how calculus can help us find that. So there's a couple of definitions, then a couple of examples at the end. Take notes, pause often, and I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Okay, as we begin our discussion of economics and marginal analysis, it's important to define three functions that are the building blocks in economics. The first one is the cost function. And the cost function is, is quite simply the cost of producing a quantity. Usually, um, the variable is Q. So it's the cost of producing Q goods. And that is represented Q is represented on the horizontal axis. And the typical uh, cost function has a y-intercept that is not at zero. That's because there are some fixed costs involved with most um, products. For instance, if you're selling t-shirts, before you sell a single t-shirt, you must buy a uh, machine that, that can put a transfer onto a t-shirt. You have to uh, design a t-shirt. You have to build a building or at least rent a building. All those would be considered fixed costs. But as you begin to uh, sell t-shirts, you have additional costs, which are variable costs. So two important terms um, from economics are fixed costs and variable costs. They won't be a big part of this class, but it's important to recognize that they're important economic terms. So the variable costs are uh, occur after the fixed costs, and they affect the shape of the graph. Now, you'll notice that there's a portion here in the kind of in the middle where the graph flattens out. And that is due to another economic um, term called economies of scale. That as the quantity Q of a product increases, the costs associated tend to flatten out. Um, for instance, if you we're buying 100 t-shirts from some supplier, the delivery charge would be, I don't know, let's say $50 to deliver 100 t-shirts to your store. But as your sales increased and you wanted to um, have a greater quantity of t-shirts to uh, send to your store, the cost per t-shirt or per delivery would not go up. The truck can be filled with 300 or 500 t-shirts and the cost per delivery does not go up because still there's just one truck bringing the um, t-shirts. So that is an example of economies of scale, and it's a reason why the cost function flattens out. Well, you'll notice also that toward the end of the cost function, they typically increase again. And that's due to things that as you're making more of a product, you have to start paying over time. Um, machines begin to wear out. Uh, they need maintenance. You may even need to replace machines. So your typical cost function has this cubic-like shape. It uh, increases, flattens out in the middle, and then increases again. Let's take a look at the revenue function. And unlike the revenue function, there are no fixed revenues. But revenues tend to start out at the origin, and as you begin to sell your product, you make money. It, at some point, will hopefully intersect the um, cost function, and that is a, an important point known as the break-even point. And the break-even point is where you your costs are now lower than your revenues, so you're starting to make money. It is this distance between the cost function, which is here on top, and the revenue function, I should say that's C of Q, apologize, the revenue function R of Q, in this region where revenue is higher,
than cost, that is profit. But you'll notice that as you sell more of a product, the cost function again um, overcomes the revenue function and you begin to lose money. So uh, you'll notice that this region between the two functions where our profit is, is indicated here by our definition of profit. Profit is literally the revenue minus the cost. So we get that um, profit equals R of Q minus C of Q. Now you might notice that the profit function is indicated by pi. So we say that the profit is pi of Q. And that's because they don't want to use the, um, they don't want to use P because P is usually associated with price in economics. So profit is usually indicated by pi. Okay, um, these are your important uh, kind of building blocks. Let's move on then to something called marginal analysis. Marginal analysis is essentially the decision at the edge of your production. So, in other words, if you are producing um, a quantity, what is the marginal cost would be the production of one more of the quantity. So, the marginal cost equals the cost of building Q plus 1 of something minus the cost of building Q. So, in other words, it's the cost of building the 101st or printing the 101st t-shirt minus the cost of printing the first 100. So we see how much is that extra 101st t-shirt going to cost us. Marginal revenue, on the other hand, is the revenue gained by selling one more t-shirt or one more shirt at the margin. So it's very similar to marginal cost. We, sub, we figure out the revenue of the Q plus 1 minus the revenue of Q items. So in other words, as an example, what's the revenue created by the f selling 101 t-shirts minus the revenue created by 100? And that will tell us the price of the 100, and, or I'm sorry, the revenue created by the 101st t-shirt. So how does this all relate to profit? So looking again at our cost function, we start off with a fixed cost and then due to economies of scale, the costs even out and then they start to increase again due to overtime and machines wearing out. On the other hand, our revenues begin to increase and at some point the revenue we're making is equal to the cost that we're spending and we've reached the break even point. Then revenues continue to increase as we sell more of our product, but that starts to flatten out. It could be due to market saturation. It could be due to, um, it might be harder to find t-shirts. And so the t-shirt suppliers start increasing our, um, our costs um, and our revenues start flattening out. And we start making, uh, we hit a point where we are, our costs are greater than our revenues. So this region in the middle, we've called our profit. And the best place to the, the point of that you're making the greatest profit is this region where the distance between the curves is greatest. That's going to be your maximum profit. Now, maximum profit is, as we saw in the prior slide, since profit is P of Q, and that equaled revenue minus cost, we want, that's going to be at a maximum when the biggest difference occurs between cost and revenue. And that can be found by finding the derivative of cost and the derivative of revenue. And, that's, and that is what the marginal revenue is and the marginal cost. They are actually the derivative of those functions. So if we looked at the place where the marginal revenue the derivative of the revenue curve had a slope that is parallel to the marginal cost, 
that was would, that would be where the maximum profit occurs and that's a really important point to get in your notes the maximum or minimum profit can occur where marginal cost equals marginal revenue and marginal cost is equal to the derivative of the cost function which is c prime of x and that equals the derivative of the uh, profit i'm sorry the revenue function which is going to be r prime of q so that's essentially marginal analysis um, all you really have to do is take the derivative of the cost function the derivative of the revenue function and find where they're equal and that's the quantity that you should make in order to maximize your profit so thinking from a graphical perspective can we find the maximum profit if the total revenue and total cost are given from the quantity 0 to 200 given by the curves revenue and C in this figure well we've already talked about how we can follow the cost function and at some point the revenue function will will cross the cost function and that's our break-even point so in this region here costs were higher than revenue so we were losing money at, but at this point revenue becomes higher than cost and so really from looks like a quantity of 60 all the way to a quantity of about 180 we're making money but the maximum profit will be made when the distance between the two curves is the greatest and that distance seems to be greatest when x equals 140 so that is the amount we would want to make we would after that we're going to be still making money but less money per shirt so that's where this idea of marginal cost and marginal revenue it is the rate of change at a particular quantity so you, for instance when this when we are at the maximum pr uh, profit here you can see that the slope of the revenue curve indicated by that line and the slope of the cost curve indicated by that line those two slopes are equal so the lines are parallel which is why to find the maximum profit we just want to set our derivative of our cost function which we call uh, marginal cost equal to the derivative of the revenue function which we call marginal revenue so let's take one more look at an example that we are given the revenue function and given the cost function and let's determine what should be the quantity be that's going to maximize our profits all right let's find the quantity q which maximizes profit if we know that the total revenue r of q and the total cost c of q are given in dollars by r of q equals this function and c of q equals that one now we know that the profit is equaled um, by subtracting cost from revenue and we find the maximum profit the same way we have done finding the maximum of any function we take the derivative so if we took the derivative of both sides we'd get the derivative of profit just equaled r of q I'm sorry r prime of q minus c prime of q now all along we've set this equal this equal to zero we set the derivative equal to zero to find the maximums and when you do that we get the very simple uh, equation to solve where I can bring the cost function because it's negative I'm gonna bring it to the other side and I'm I get that C prime of Q equals R prime of Q and when that happens that, that will be my maximum uh, profit so let's take a look at where that happens in this particular example. So rather than go through all those steps again, I'm simply going to set R prime equal to C prime and solve. And when I do that, I get the derivative of revenue is just going to be 5 minus 0 .006 Q and I'll set that equal to C prime which is going to be 1.1 now I'm going to do some algebra here and solve for um, 
solve for q, and I get q equals 3.9 divided by 0 0.006, which means q equals 650 units. So, if we knew that our revenue and our cost functions were these given, I would set my factory up to make 650 units. That means that I would schedule workers for that amount, I would buy that amount uh, for my suppliers, and if I did that, I would maximize the amount of money I was making. Okay, Rambo, there's a lot of information here. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you took good notes, and I hope this helped.